Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, I'm going to give you a short explanation as to what muscle twitches are, what unfused tetanus means, and what fused tetanus means. We're also going to be talking about the cellular mechanisms associated with these things. So with that, let's give it a go. So before we start the experiments in this video, you have to know two terms. The first term is what tension is. So tension in the context of muscles is the pulling force exerted by a muscle. And frequency in the context of muscles is going to be the amount of signals or stimuli released per second. So now that we know these terms, let's actually talk about what the, th the three things are. So what are muscle twitches, what are unfused tetanus, and what is fused tetanus? So let's start off with muscle twitches. So in order to understand what a muscle twitch is, we have an experiment. So in this experiment, you have a stimulus generator that is connected via a wire to a skeletal muscle fiber. Now this skeletal muscle fiber is going to be connected to two points at tension sensors. So these tension sensors are going to measure or sense the amount of tension generated by the fiber. And the readings that the sensor has will be delivered to a monitor, which will show us the amount of tension generated by the muscle at over a certain period of time. So with that, let's take a look at what a muscle twitch is. So let's bring in one stimulus. Now this stimulus is going to be analogous to a muscle action potential. And all we're gonna do is release one stimulus into the muscle. So this single stimulus goes into the muscle and it causes the muscle to contract. And what we see on the monitor is something like this. So what we see is that after the stimulus, the muscle starts to contract and it increases in tension. And then after it hits this point, the muscle starts to relax all the way back down to where it started from. So what we see with this muscle twitch is that the muscle was able to contract and then fully relax. So what is a muscle twitch? A muscle twitch is a muscle contraction caused by a single muscle action potential. Now, the interesting thing associated with this single muscular twitch was that the muscle was able to fully relax. So what are the cellular mechanisms associated with this full relaxation? So this is a simplified diagram of a muscle fiber. And if you want to know the full details about how muscles contract and relax, I highly advise you to go check out my excitation contraction coupling video in this playlist. But in general, there are two mechanisms by which the muscle relaxes. The first is through the circa pump, which pumps calcium from the cytosol into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And the other two mechanisms are gonna be through the PMCA pump and the sodium calcium exchanger, which pump calcium from the cytosol into the extracellular fluid. Now in this video, I am grouping these two together, but in reality, they're two different proteins. So the PMCA is a pump, which uses ATP to pump calcium out. And the sodium calcium exchanger uses the energy released by the downward movement of sodium to move calcium out of the cell. So during the experiment, we had one single stimuli. And this stimulus caused calcium to flow into the cell through certain mechanisms. Now, in order to fully relax the muscle, you have to remove all the calcium that came into the muscle. Therefore, what happens is, is that the muscle cell starts to remove the calcium that came in. And it does this through the circa, the PMCA, and the NCX. So the circa pump is going to remove the majority of the calcium that came in. And the PMCA pump and the NCX will remove the rest. Now, it takes a certain amount of time for the muscle cell to do this. Therefore, it takes a certain amount of time for the muscle to fully relax. And the muscle fully relaxes when all the calcium is removed from the cytosol, as we see right here. So with a singular muscle twitch, the muscle is able to fully relax due to the cell having enough time to remove the calcium from the cytosol that came in from the stimulus. So what if we were to increase the frequency? So if we were to increase the frequency, 
what would happen is that the stimulus generator would produce more signals per unit time. So therefore, let's just say that the previous experiment where we only did one stimulus took place over 10 seconds. In this case, let's just say since we increase the frequency to five hertz, that over 10 seconds, the stimulus generator produces two stimuli. So when it does this, the two stimuli move into the muscle cell and cause two contractions, which we see right here. Now, this is the first contraction caused by the first stimulus. And what we see here is that the muscle fiber is able to fully relax before the next stimuli comes in. So it fully relaxes and then, in, then the next stimulus comes in and causes a contraction. So these two things are muscle twitches. So what's going on at the cellular level here? Well, at the cellular level, with the first stimulus, this causes, let's just say, six calciums to come in. And the circa pump starts removing these calciums. And so does the PMCA and NCX. Now, since the frequency is low enough for the cell to fully relax, all the calciums that came into the cytosol are removed from the cytosol by the time the next stimulus comes in. So we pretty much start from scratch and the muscle is fully relaxed. So when the second stimulus comes in, we repeat the same thing where the circa starts to remove the calcium and then the PMC and NCX do the same thing. So at a frequency of five hertz, the muscle still has enough time in between stimuli to remove all the calcium that came in from the previous stimulus and therefore fully relax in between the two stimuli. So what if we increase the frequency to a point that doesn't allow full relaxation? What would that look like? Well, let's just say we stimulate the muscle at 20, 10 hertz. So when we stimulate the muscle at 10 hertz, we get something like this. So let's just say at this frequency, we get three stimuli. And each of these stimuli is going to cause a contraction. And what we see here is from the first stimuli, we get a contraction. And then after the contraction occurs, the muscle starts to relax. But before the muscle can fully relax, another stimulus comes in, which causes another contraction. But this contraction is stronger than the previous one. And then it starts to relax again. But before it can fully relax, another stimulus comes in, which causes an even stronger contraction. So this is called temporal summation. And this occurs if we stimulate the muscle before relaxing it fully. And if we do this, the twitches begin to summate. So what is happening at the cellular level here? Well, at the cellular level, we can understand it with this table. So we're gonna compare the first experiment at five hertz to this experiment, which occurred at 10 hertz. So remember, at a frequency of 5 hertz, the cell had an adequate amount of time in order to fully relax. So let's just say that the cell starts off with zero calciums. And after the first stimulus, six calcium come into the cell, which therefore causes the calcium level to be six after the first stimulus. Now, since at 5 hertz, the cell has adequate time to fully relax, all of the calcium that came into the cell is removed from the cytosol via the circa pump, the PMCA, and NCX. So therefore, the loss during relaxation is going to be six. So therefore, before the next stimulus hits, the calcium level is going to be zero again. And since it's zero again, when the next stimulus hits and you get six calcium coming in, the calcium level is going to be six again after the next stimulus. So what do we see here? Well, the first stimulus caused the calcium level to move from zero to six. And these six calciums are used for contraction. The second stimulus also started off at a point of zero. And then after the stimulus hit, you have six calcium come in. So therefore, the contraction produced by the first stimulus is going to be equal in strength to the contraction initiated by the second stimulus. And this is what we saw with the graph that for five hertz. Now let's do the same thing at 10 hertz. So we start off with an initial calcium of zero, and after the first stimulus, six calcium come in. Therefore, the calcium level is six. Now, since the frequency is higher and doesn't allow the cell to fully relax before the next stimulus, 
instead of losing six calciums from the cytosol, the cell only has time to remove, let's just say, four. Therefore, before the next stimulus hits, the cell starts off at a calcium level of two. So when the next stimulus hits and six come in, the next level is going to be eight. So the first stimulus caused the calcium level to go from zero to six, and the six calciums are used for a contraction. The next stimulus started off at two, and when you add six, you get eight, and then these eight calciums are used for contraction. So therefore, the second contraction is stronger than the first one. And this is the idea of temporal summation. So when the frequency is 10 hertz, the muscle isn't able to fully relax before the next stimulus hits. Therefore, there's still some calcium left over by the time the next stimulus hits. Therefore, the calcium level gradually increases with each stimulus, and we get temporal summation. Now, what if we further increase the frequency to 25 hertz? What would that look like? Well, what we see here is, first of all, at 25 hertz, there was seven stimuli, and they're all being displayed here. Now, the first stimuli is actually right here, which causes this contraction. The second stimuli causes this one, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and then the seventh. So this right here is called unfused tetanus. So tetanus is the state in which individual twitches are no longer distinguishable. And unfused tetanus occurs if we stimulate the muscle before relaxing it fully at a higher frequency. And when we do this, the force will increase to a plateau, which is what we see here. So it plateaus sort of at this level. So what is occurring in the cell in this case? Well, at 25 hertz, we start off at zero. Then after the stimulus, we get six calcium coming in. The calcium that level is then six, but since the frequency is higher, the cell has even less time to relax. Therefore, instead of removing four like it did at 10 hertz, let's just say it has time to remove 2.5. Therefore, the calcium level before the next stimulus is 3.5, and when we add six, we get 9.5. So therefore, the contraction elicited by this frequency is greater than the contraction elicited by this frequency. So we can compare it by looking at these two. So at 10 hertz, the first stimulus produced a contraction caused by six calcium, and then the second stimulus caused a contraction caused by eight. At 25 hertz, the first stimulus caused a contraction caused by six calcium, the second stimulus caused a contraction caused by 9.5. Therefore, this contraction caused by the second stimulus is stronger at 25 hertz than it was at 10 hertz. So now let's bump up the frequency even higher to 50 hertz. What would that look like? So this is something called fused tetanus. So fused tetanus occurs if we stimulate the muscle at the fusion frequency. So the fusion frequency is the frequency at which individual muscle twitches fuse together into one big sort of block. And the twitches are actually so close together in time that the muscle doesn't relax at all. Also, the twitches occur so close in time that the force plateaus sort of at this constant level. Now, at frequencies higher than the fusion frequency, in this case for this muscle fiber, it's 50 hertz, the tension produced increases only by very little. So this red line here is going to be the tension produced at 50 hertz. So if we were to increase the frequency more, the amount of tension produced by the muscle fiber wouldn't really increase too much. It only increases by very little. So how do muscles increase force? So technically there is two ways. The first way is by increasing the frequency of stimulation, as we saw with these experiments. And the second way is by increasing the number of motor units activated. So the more muscle fibers you recruit, the more muscle fibers are activated. Therefore, the more force a muscle can generate. So that's it for this video. I hope it helped you understand all of those concepts, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.